Everybody rock your body. Get ready because the next guest of Get Inspired with Jason, the podcast and YouTube show, not only is he a stud, not only is he (laughs) inspirational, but he's a true badass that dealt with struggle. And now he's the empire to men that want to empower their lives mentally, physically, emotionally, and with lots of caliente style. I welcome you (laughs) to Mr. Alpha M himself. With over 600 million followers on YouTube. Is that correct? Not 600 million, 6 million. <laughs> that's still, that's a lot. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> I welcome you, Alpha M. Aaron Marina. How are you, sir? Jason, I'm well. Thank you so much for that incredible introduction. Yeah, things are things are good. It's um it's great to be here. We're, I guess, both in the business of inspiration and and helping people just, you know, unlock their, their potential and, and feeling great about themselves. So it's great to be here. Thank you so much, man. Hey, this is Jason Roselle and welcome to Get Inspired, the official podcast and YouTube show that will empower your mind, body, business, social media, branding, relationships, and anything that's holding you back from becoming the best version of you. Listen, before I became a TV personality, an author, a celebrity trainer, a life and wellness coach, and the founder of Caliente Fitness, I was broke, obese for 20 plus years, full of stretch marks, full of excuses, and most importantly, here's the deal, I was unhappy. I was able to change my life completely, and since then, I've helped thousands do the same. This show is gonna bring you awesome guests, tons of helpful programs that'll aid you, but most importantly, your questions and topics that will make this show your show. My question is this, Are you ready to get inspired? Well, get ready, because the show starts now. One of the biggest things that I connected with you, and I've interviewed some pretty awesome people, is that nothing to you specifically came easy, even though, yeah, a lot of people may prejudge you. Like, I'm sure I got, you know, I get prejudged all the time. Oh, well, you're good looking. You have a nice body. You have it easy, right? Nothing was easy. No, no, every, nothing, nothing amazing that you're ever going to accomplish is easy. I'm still waiting, you know, to make money easy. I'm still like, I'm still waiting for that. Unfortunately, you know, everything I've ever had to do, and I'm sure you're in the same situation, Jason has been, you know, it's been a struggle. You know, you've got to, you've got to work really hard to be successful at really anything, whether or not that's your, your physique, your, your body, your relationship, your, your career. I mean, it takes work. And when you stop paying attention, things, you know, dwindle, they die. And, and, you kind of go off the rails and that's, you know, same thing, like I said, with your body, right? I mean, you've got to constantly, you know, pay attention to what you're eating, what you're doing in order to, you know, make sure that not only you look good, but you're healthy. And it's not just about having six pack abs. It's about having a healthy heart and not, you know, not, not having a heart disease. And so, yeah, definitely everything is hard. And anybody who says otherwise is trying to sell you something. (laughs) A hundred and ten percent. So I got a few questions from actually fans and different people that I've worked with, whether I coach them in the branding industry, the wellness industry, walk us through a simple day of what is Aaron Marino's life like? Because a lot of people again assume they assume because you've been doing this for quite some time now that you have it easily made, meaning genetically. Oh, well, he has apps. Well, he's yeah. lucky. He already has a following. Oh, he's lucky. I know if you work as hard as I do, which I know for a fact you do, because you've been on national television shows, which we'll get into as well, like I have for many years. What is just a typical day and how small or how huge is your team for you to even have balance within yourself, your business and your personal life? So I'm not sure balance works for me. Um, So yeah, my day has has been pretty much, my day is boring. In terms of, I literally do the same thing Monday through Friday. It's it's not sexy. It's not a whole lot of fun. It's just what I have to do. And that is, you know, I get up early. I work for a few hours. I go for a run. Um, and then I, you know, come home, eat breakfast. I'm at my office by typically at like 11 o'clock and I'm filming a video. And then I still do all of my editing. And so, um, you really? know, so, so, you oh, yeah. Editing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so here's how my day goes. So it's, you know, at, at 11, I'm, I'm filming a video. I'll be done around like one o'clock. And then I will go to uh, my warehouse where one of my companies, Pete and Pedro and Enemy, um, the sunglass company ship out of. 
And then I'll come back typically a few t- times a week at like 2.30. I'll have a conference call with, with my other business partners for another business. And then from that point, it's it's me editing my videos and, and taking conference calls, doing you know cool podcasts like this. And, um, and then I'll go and exercise. I'll go in the evening, typically around like 5, 5.30 to go work out with weights. Then I'm home, I eat dinner, and I'm editing until about 10 or 11 o'clock, go to bed. The next day, get up, do the same thing every day. Mind blown, mind blown. <laughs> so wait a minute. One of the things, God, there's so many things that I respect about you. Um, number one, you've been married for many years, correct? Yeah, yeah. 2000, we got married five, six of seven. And so we were together for four years before that. So we are you know, so we've been together for a long time. Yeah, long time. You know, a lot of my followers, I would say it's 50-50. Um, you know, audiences that are predominantly women that are married, have kids, some are single. And one of the biggest hurdles they have is, you know, life balance. And you said, hey, I have a hard time with balance, right? Yeah. How do you prioritize your time, your personal time, family, friends, especially your wife. And yeah. one, one thing to add, uh, sorry, I have to say this because it's super important. You keep the privacy of your personal life very private. And dude, yeah. I freaking commend you for that. Yeah, that was something, you know, and that was something that, that uh, when I first got into YouTube, I mean, this was back in 2008. And so a long time, you know, before it got really popular to sort of show every aspect of your life, including like going to the, like, like now people are, people overshare to the point of, I think it being detrimental to your relationship. Yes. Especially, like when I see some of these, these, these content creators really sharing everything about their life and their relationship online, it's a disaster. And it's, it's something that's unsustainable. Nope. You know, you're not supposed to have a camera on you all the time. And so early on when I started, you know, posting videos and I saw kind of the feedback, I was like, Ooh, this kind of stings a little bit. I'm like, there's no way I'm subjecting anybody that I love to this type of, of, you know, sort of you're opening yourself up for criticism and regardless of how secure you are, no matter how, you know, comfortable you are in your own skin, you know, I still to this day, you know, many, many years later have not figured out a way to not let the negativity bother me. Right. I try not to look at it, but you know, sometimes you see things and it hurts. And I knew that it was, it was, you know, my wife is a beautiful woman, but, but it doesn't matter. Somebody will always find, I, I joke that, you know, you could be teaching blind kittens to read and somebody's <laughs> going to have a problem with it. Right. And yeah. so, yeah, I started, um, uh, I just decided, you know, I'm not going to have my wife be a part of my, my content. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's worked for me. It's worked for us. And it's kind of just one of those things where it was a decision I made to protect the sanctity of my relationship and the sanity of my wife that, uh, that I needed to do that. Now, in terms of balance with my relationship, we don't have children. And so this is something that if I had, if I had children, my life would look very different. The other thing is my wife, you know, her and I have been together so long, we kind of just like understand how it, how it is right now. And so things are great. She doesn't require a ton of, you know, me like a upper butt all the time and a crazy <laughs> amount of attention. She has a job, she has her own life. And so it works really well. And uh, weekends are kind of our time to, to be together and, and lay on the couch and do nothing and watch TV and not talk. And it's fine. We go for walks, we go out to eat, but that's kind of our, our thing. And so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's for us, it's, it works. And I think that because we don't have children, I'm able to be selfish and, and my businesses and my entrepreneurial endeavors have kind of, you know, some, to some degree, take a lot of that energy and effort that I would give towards, you know, family or children. So. A hundred and ten percent. You said one key word that I resonate with so much: selfish. Right? You got to be selfish with be. yourself, your love, you know, your 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 passion for what you're good at. What most people don't realize, Aaron, especially that want to get into our field of entrepreneurship, getting on TV, whatever their their passions is, you have to be compulsively addicted. There's just no other way to say it, right? Yeah. I, I, uh, and I want to get into this topic in a minute. I, I read that you were, you used to drink alcohol a lot. You used to uh, dip, you know? Yep. You used to, oh you man. Know? Yeah. I, I still love, I love the idea of it. I just can't do it. <laughs> right. and, and No, no. And I want to know how you, you quit. Cause that's a huge thing. What one question somebody wanted me to ask you, but back to that, look, a lot of times when people in relationships and people that I coach, they have a hard time with a 
how can I be in a secure relationship and not let it be known to the world that on Instagram or Facebook, you didn't post any photos of me. I don't think that's needed. And clearly your case. No, 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 no. I think that's, and, 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 you know, as soon as you realize that it's funny because everybody loves their husband or wife, like so much on their anniversary or birthday on Facebook. And you see everybody, you know, posting these amazing things. And, and it's so funny because you know, these people and you're like, wait a second, you talk so much shit about your husband or your wife, but today they're the greatest person in the world. Like, okay. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's really just gotta be, you know, you've got to find what works for you and then, you know, screw everything else and don't worry about it. If, if, if it makes you feel better, your significant other, you know, that you're posting pictures together, you know, that's fine. But for me and my wife, it's, that doesn't, that doesn't do it. You know, it, it's showing up what on the, in the times that really matter when, when you're sick or when there's a, a family crisis, it's about, you know, the support and the unconditional love in that way. It's not about posting a picture so somebody else can see that you're, you're in love. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. True. And it's just like the behind the scenes work that people don't know that you put in, that I put in. It's the same thing. You can argue with someone that you're dating. And I say this for anyone that's watching or listening right now, having a hard time, dude, if I'm showing you the real love with actions versus visually opening up to the whole world, you're you're blessed absolutely and, and it's a and it's a and it's a you know you, you've heard the saying like what's your love language right and so so my wife her love language is you know is cooking is you know doing like little things like that like that's how she shows like how much she loves now one of the downsides is that when her and i met i gained 30 pounds because oh. i was like wow like <laughs> like i we moved in and all of a sudden i'm like wait bacon tastes good and biscuits. These are, these are interesting. Like I never ate that stuff before. I'm like, Oh my God. And yeah. so I literally one day like looked in the mirror and I saw like my ass in a reflection. I'm like, I got to cut this out. I like, I, I, you know, my belly, I was, I wasn't comfortable taking my shirt off at the yeah. beach. And, and this is from somebody that, you know, their whole life from the age of 12 years old was super into their body and their physique. And, and that's what they kind of, or for me, a lot of my identity revolved around that because I was into, you know, the natural bodybuilding thing and the nutrition store and personal training. Like that's what I knew myself as, as somebody that, that had a nice physique and that really took care of the body. And, and so when we got together, I'm like, look, you got to stop. I love you, but you got, you can't do this. And so I had to get control and, and take action, but, but yeah. And, and I don't have great genetics. I mean, my mom, my dad, they're both overweight. Everybody in my family, you know, we, I come from a long line of, you know, short little Italian people that, that don't have amazing genetics and like to eat carbohydrates. And so I'm um, the same way. And so it just takes, you know, extra, you know, I do cardio every single day, Monday through Monday through every day, Monday, seven days a week, I'm doing cardio. And, and what, cardio type of, what type of cardio? Gen, gen, for me, I'm, I, I like to run. I just like to be outside and, and just like, it's a slow, methodical jog. It's not anything like, you know, <laughs> nobody's going to, no, I'm not beating anybody. In you got a the Nike or commercial. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just out listening to my, you know, pod or my headphones, my podcast, my, my, uh, my, my, my music. And just, that's my time for me just to sort of be out in nature. And that's what I love to do. And so, I mean, I can, you know, do a treadmill or spin class or whatever, or hit training. I've done it all, yeah. but I just like putting in my headphones and just, just going for, for a, uh, you know, seven, eight mile run every day. That's awesome. You know, another thing I, I, I discovered actually probably a year ago when I started following you, I didn't know. And tell me if you feel the same way. I'm, I just found out you're my height. I'm five, six, two. Mm-hmm. Is it you or me that I feel it would to me, it's a blessing because I worked way harder than any of my competitors. A, because I was shorter. B, because I wasn't the best looking kid growing up. And C, because I was obese. Do you feel it was an advantage or disadvantage you growing up not being 6'3", for example? Now, you know, height has never been something that I'd been real like aware or insecure about. The only time I'm really insecure about my height was... Um, I was insecure about a lot of other things. My height wasn't one of them. But, was but I, I, the, uh, the, um, you know, when I would go to like, when I went away to college and I was at a fraternity party, I, I'm not a fraternity guy. I wasn't ever in a fraternity, but I went to a party and I'm like, man, and, and like groups of people and like concerts or festivals, when there are a lot of people around me, I feel super uncomfortable because I can't see anything. Damn. And so that makes me like super like weird. And so I will prevent, like, I won't go to like things where I know there's going to just be a massive amount of people because it just makes me feel like, you know, like I can't escape. I can't see anything. And so that makes me insecure. Um, 
you know, in terms of my height, I think growing up poor was one of my biggest advantages. When I look back, it wasn't, you know, we, we, we were pretty broke. And so I think that was for me, that was the biggest motivator that I'm like, all right, I don't know what success is going to look like, but it definitely is going to be something that I'm going to seek out. Um, and so I think being poor, I think a lot of people, when you, when you grow up without means, you basically, there are two ways you can go. You can either say, okay, this is the way it's going to be the way it's always going to be, or it's going to give you some type of, it's going to give you a fire and a drive. Like, you know, you are going to make it and, and succeed, you know, despite your current situation. And so um, those were, were the things that I was, I guess, I was very insecure about not having any money. Like I, like I, I felt like even today, like I still feel like I, I, um, I think like my, my ex-girlfriend when I was in high school, her mother, I feel like she looked down, down on me. And so it seems like, you know, I'm still like the poor kid, yeah. you know, trying to like prove to other people that I'm good yeah. enough. And so I think that's still like to this day, one of my biggest motivators just to prove something to myself and to other people that, you know, um, you know, I can do it and that I'm worthy and that I'm good enough. Your hunger and your humbleness is one of the biggest attractive things that I think most people in this world can agree with me is why you're successful, Aaron. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? I, I, you uh, can't say yes if you're humble, right? <laughs> right, take, right. Because perspective is everything. Uh, because I'm so humble. <laughs> right. You're, a, you know, you're a funny, cocky, humble guy. I mean, if don't want to exactly. say. Well, what was Aaron like? Well, he was cocky. He was funny. And he, yeah. was humble, he was right? super humble. Exactly. <laughs> Put an emphasis on humble. No. Yeah. I, I think that's it. I mean, I'm always, so I, one of the things that I'm so thankful for is that I'm, I didn't have any type of success when I was younger. Cause I wouldn't have been able to handle it. If I was as rich or as handsome as some of these guys that I see online, I'd be dead. I mean, fact, that's not yeah. even because I didn't learn balance until later in life. And so for me, I'm also, and I had, I, I mean, I, before I ever, you know, had any type of success, I mean, I'm 45 years old. And so I didn't start YouTube until I was like 30 something. I had a business fail. I was bankrupt. I was, you know, I didn't know where I was going in, with my life at that point anymore. And so I am still like not too far away from that. And, and so, you know, when you realize that, you know, I think we're all like a few bad decisions away from being broke and homeless. It's about, you know, trying to make the right decisions and just understanding that it all could kind of go away, you know, tomorrow. And that's kind of how I view things. It's, you know, I'm just, I'm super fortunate right now. Every day I get up and I say the same thing to myself. I look myself in the mirror and say, don't fuck it up today. <laughs> because, right. because I feel like I'm a part of my language, but I feel like I, I just like I've worked hard and I just don't want to screw it up because I know what it looks like. And and I'm comfortable right now and I'm happy. And so, yeah. you know, hopefully I can continue to do that for a little bit longer. Absolutely. I, I, this is something I was not going to ask you in the questions. Do you invest much? And I know you obviously, because I want to talk about your companies in a second before we wrap up today. Do you invest whether it's stocks? Do you do, I don't know, house investing? Like, and I yeah, say yeah. Investing. Yeah, I do. Um, so I, I invest, I, I understand real estate a little bit. I really like real estate and it's not like I buy like rental units, to like lease out or lease out to the families, but I have a few commercial rental properties. Um, and so, yeah, I, I invest a little bit in time in terms of like, you know, the stock market and, and, you know, there are certain stocks that I like and typically the way that I choose stocks, I'm not, I'm not great at it or anything, but if I use it and I like it and I understand like Shopify, like I bought Shopify a long time ago, just because like, I get it. I use yeah. it. I'm like, this is amazing. And it's going to, I think, change things, you know, Lululemon, if my wife who's cheap will go and spend $120 for a pair of leggings, yeah. that means that other people will. And then I got a pair of Lululemon shorts. I'm like, wow, these are different and amazing. <laughs> and so, um, so, you know, doing little things like that, but, um, you know, I've never, I haven't gotten into like cryptocurrency that much because I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I just feel like, you know, they say like, don't invest money that you can't, you know, that you're not comfortable losing. For yeah. me, I'm not comfortable losing anything. I think the saying should be don't lose, don't invest more than you can endure losing. Like and that. so, you know, it's like, it all might, you know, if it goes away, can you, can you not be eating out of a trash can? <laughs> Amen. Amen. How, how do you deal with stress and anxiety that, and maybe you don't suffer from this, but I did for many years, which is what I, as a life coach help out, out as well. Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you just, 
I run. I exercise. That's my yeah. that's my that's therapy. Thing. OK, that's my thing. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't um, I don't journal. I don't. Um, and plus, you know, the other thing that I do for therapy is, is I film, you know, a lot of videos. And so, you know, my YouTube channel and just being able to talk to the camera is and and that's, you know, a lot of things that I, I talk about are things that I'm currently dealing with or have dealt with or just getting it out. Talking a lot helps. You know, I'm also a big fan of therapy. You know, I think that that if you're struggling dealing with something that's preventing you from from being happy and healthy and fulfilled, you got to deal with your shit, right? A lot of times we're collateral damage in other people's, you know, problems. It's not that we're bad people. It's not that we did anything wrong. It's just that, you know, it, it sometimes, you know, life happens to people and, and sometimes crappy things happen to good people, but you've got to figure out a way to, to champion yourself. And, and I think that therapy is a, a gift, like they've said many times that you give yourself and just you got to figure out a way to deal with your issues because until you do, it's going to manifest in a lot of different, like unhealthy ways, or it can, right. You can, you know, have, you know, drug alcohol like me. I, um, I used to have a really bad, you know, relationship with, with alcohol. I was drinking way too much, like every day. And it was something that looking back hindsight, I was just, you know, trying to deal with issues that I hadn't dealt with and, and self-medicate honestly. And so, um, until you're ready to, you know, really do the hard legwork, it, you know, you're going to suffer and it could be eating. It could be, you know, it could be cheating on your spouse. There are so many different areas and aspects where, you know, your issues can manifest and, and, and come out in negative ways that you got to figure out what's going on before you're ever going to be good for yourself or, or anybody else. Or anybody. Yeah. Had I really quick, tell me, how did you quit tobacco and alcohol? If you were in under one minute, it was okay. Under one minute. It was a, it was a, it was the same time. I basically wanted to ch quit chewing tobacco. And so I quit alcohol knowing that I, that was my big trigger. Like, and yeah. so I was a two can a day, uh, nicotine user. And, um, yeah. And so I basically was like, I gotta, I gotta stop this. So I quit. I started exercising more. I really focused on my diet and it was super hard, but it was the thing. It's one of the things that I'm the most proud of myself for being able to do because nicotine is a horrible, horribly addicting thing. And, and just the byproduct was six months later, I didn't drink. And I was like, wait a second, everything's better. I feel better about myself. I look better. I'm having better relationships, everything like tastes and smells better. Like I was like, this is awesome. And that's kind of how it happened. Dude, kudos to you. Kudos to you. I'm assuming no, no relapse. And, and alcohol, I, I drink wine and stuff. Oh. And now I'm not, I wasn't, I was, I was a blackout drunk type of drinker. Oh, like, and so yeah. now like I, I have a good relationship with alcohol. I enjoy wine or, or bourbon um, in terms of nicotine. Once I put it down, I have never had any, I've even had opportunities um, to do like cigar promotions on my YouTube channel. I'm like, I can't do it. I really? just can't do it. Oh, I can't. Wow. Yeah, I can't. Wow. And they're offering to pay a lot of money, but it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't want any nicotine near me. And I also don't, you know, just agree with that. I mean, it's about health. And so yeah. that's kind of like both of our message. It's about taking care of yourself. And so a hundred. Yeah. Uh, you've been on sh a shark tank, not once, but twice. Um, <laughs> you know, by the way, anyone that's watching or listening, I saw your Steve Harvey video, by the way, and <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Very awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll have to talk another day and maybe on a part two on sex exercise. I actually have part two coming out soon. Uh oh, um, look out. Count yeah. me in. <laughs> look out. This, you heard it here first. Um, Aaron, not not once, but twice Shark Tank. You didn't win. Right. Either, either time. first time I, first time I didn't get a deal. Second time I got a deal, you got a deal, but you didn't take it. And it was with correct. Devil, correct? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And for anyone that wants to either a learn more about this or just really dive deep, because there's going to be a lot of questions. I want you to go to Aaron's website, which everything's going to be listed. And I want you to check this out because what this man did on shark tank, his second time around, he pretty much said, thank you, but no, thank you. Am I right? Yeah. 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 They offered me. So, so the first time I went on shark tank, it was for a style system and that was a heartbreaking lesson. So it was for those like DVD series where I'm like, okay, I came up with this like formula to teach guys how to dress. I'm like, awesome. And um, this was early days, like, like, like info product. Right. But I wasn't technologically savvy enough. So I actually made like physical DVDs, which you can't even stick a DVD anywhere, 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 anymore. Anyway, anyway, didn't get a deal. 
the night that Shark Tank aired, I was like, I'm like, it doesn't matter. They don't know what they're talking about. I sold one style system from airing on Shark Tank. Nine million people see your product and one well, actually was sold, which was devastating. But, you know, what are you going to do? You move on. And so I uh, came up with a hair product company called Pete and Pedro, went back on. I, I basically said, hey, you know, thank you so much. You taught me so much, you know, I and I used so I was like, oh, you know, you're the reason Shark Tank's the reason why I started this company and now it's super successful. And, um, and so got on and I pitched it and they didn't want anything to do with the product. They wanted to invest in me as a social media sort of personality. And um, and yeah. I was I took the deal just because I knew that it was going to be good TV. And then as soon as I got done, I'm like, yeah, this isn't I don't need your help with that, Barb. But thanks. And uh, it was still great. And it still reruns on MSNBC a lot. And, uh, you know, it still doesn't drive a ton of sales, but it's still really cool to be on it. It was awesome. Oh, and nobody can take that away from you. I mean, come on. I've been on so many shows myself and, you know, just the experience. Right. Yeah. So cool. You are do you have done things and are doing things that people wish and dream of doing. Something right. else that you, you had to dig a little deep. I was on Fear Factor back when Fear Factor with Joe Rogan was on the first like time. That was another really wow. crazy experience. Yeah, Fear Factor was insane. I didn't win that. You didn't <laughs> so win that one? Okay. Apparently, I, apparently fear is a factor. <laughs> literally. All right, guess which one? My first reality show. You ready for this? Blind Date with Roger Lodge. <laughs> I remember. How old are you? I'm 40. Okay, okay. I Because I, I used to watch that show all the time. Yeah. It was great. It How'd was, it go? Oh my God. I, they brought me in actually twice. First one was bad. And I was, you know, I'm from Queens, New York, Astoria. So I back then I'm like, totally like, Hey, how you doing over there? You yeah. want a beefcake with me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Yep. <laughs> I look like an asshole on the first one, part of my French. Second time around, they put me with this girl that literally was like, I don't know. I'm not actually, you know what? We live in a different time. I'm about to be mean. I'm not going to yep. be. Mean. Don't do it. Don't do it. But not, not, not who you want to be. Yeah, with. Exactly. <laughs> Fast forward. I was living in Florida, moved to LA, started my, actually my first acting career gig was on Entourage season three. Yeah. Uh, and then I got on reality TV on a series regular. I was on, I love New York on VH1. Yeah. And fast forward. I've been on God knows over 50, 60 shows since then. My yeah. latest reality show, which you probably know her, Jillian Michaels. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Sweat Inc. I, won I was the finalist, won 10K on that, and then went on to the finals, didn't win. And now I do daytime TV once or twice a month. I'm going to be on a big show next week, but you've seen a few of things like things. And I'm just a life, wellness, and relationship business coach. That's yep. I give people advice, which yep. brings me to the last segue because we got to wrap you up. You got to get going. I got to get going. Um, you, my friend, do so much. But one of the questions I got that I found interesting from one of my clients was, what is, what do you tell someone who has awesome products or services with a great following on social media? Say someone like me, all right? Uh, Facebook, IG, how do you expand your brand? Is it through Facebook, IG, YouTube ads? What do you recommend for someone that has under, I don't know, a million followers. Like I have a half a million on Facebook and let me tell you the algorithm sucks, dude. Yeah. I've never done ads and I'm like, maybe I should ask Aaron, should I do ads? No, 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 no. Definitely not with Facebook. Facebook ads aren't, aren't working like they used to. Um, you know, I think that in today's world, it's, it's funny because there's so many different like avenues and, and places where you could, you know, create content, whether or not it's, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and it gets a little bit overwhelming, Twitter, I mean, you name it, like there's so many different platforms. In terms of growing a brand, I still am a firm believer, and I've, I've tried a lot of different platforms, that YouTube is still the number one place that you should be focusing your attention to build a brand. It is, it is evergreen. You know, once you do something on, on TikTok or Facebook or whatever it is, I mean, it's got, I mean, the, the, the attention span and the life cycle of that post is literally like 24 hours and it's gone. YouTube, you know, it's not technically a search engine, but that is where people go to find and learn everything. And so if you've got any business, any product, you know, putting out content, it's free. You just need to spend the time and, and, and put it out there. That is where you should be spending your, your time because people are going to find you not only today, they're going to find you in a month from now, two years from now. I'm still making sales from videos I did five years ago. And so, I mean, it's like, it's just out there. Now, quick way to hack the system before you guys go. 
if you have a product or you have a specific like message, if you want to grow faster, what I'd recommend is go look at other people that are doing similar type of content or talking about the similar type of things that you're doing. And then look, filter their videos by most viewed. All right. And then do your version of their most popular five videos or whatever it may be. Five, three, two, one. It doesn't matter. Knowing that that was popular enough that it's going to basically, you know, you know, people are searching for it. And so a lot of people think that they've got to do everything like totally different and come out with a new eh, don't reinvent the wheel. When it comes to you putting out content, look to basically put out content that, you know, automatically people are going to be looking for and searching for. And that's the quickest way to build your brand. And what happens is YouTube then will facilitate your growth uh, because they really reward newer up, up and coming, um, you know, content creators. But YouTube, 100 percent, that's where you should grow your brand. That in itself has solved so many people's issues, including mine. And I'll tell you, ever since there's a new uh, update on Facebook, things are costing more, less people are seeing it. Instagram ads boost is garbage, right? And yep. I say this because I work with different people in small businesses that they consult with me and I'm like, okay, did you try this? And they tell me the amount of money they spent, Aaron is ridiculous oh it's marketing is the black hole in terms of you know because it's it's so expensive and you know back when i started my image consulting business back in 2006 it was i mean i could i was the only place i was advertising was was google adwords well i could bid for a word for three dollars now that same keyword is three hundred dollars and so it's gotten astronomical and you know in order to really see an roi and something else that you need to be aware of is I also have an advertising agency where we work with like literally like 40 different like YouTube influencers, podcasters, people in that space. And from the back end and also having brands that has worked with a lot of these influencers, they are super expensive. And the ROI on that is not what you think it is. And so before you just think that, oh, I'm just going to have, you know, Alpha M or Jason talk about, you know, my product and that's going to solve all my problems and I'm going to invest 5,000, 10,000, whatever the money is. It's not going to happen. You've got to figure out and have more strategy and strategic sort of, you know, marketing, you know, strategies than, uh, than, than just that. An influencer isn't going to solve your problem. You've got to have a great product. But more than that, you've got to figure out that messaging angle and, and mechanism. Now, something else with YouTube, people can smell inauthentic inauthenticity and bullshit. And so go into it with the idea that you're going to provide value and people can understand that and see that. And just as a byproduct, you will figure out how to make money or how to monetize that a little bit later. You know, right now, don't go into it with, I'm going to make a million dollars on YouTube. Now, what do I talk about? You know, if you've got a message, you've got something you want to talk about, talk about it, put it out there, figure out the monetization angle later. But yeah. So <laughs> you're like, drop my boo. I know, I know, I know. I need, I need, I, <laughs> I need. I will minutes. tell you, because I'm sure I'm going to have people ask me in, later this fall, because I'm looking to expand and do, you know, uh, speaking appearances, definitely upcoming, uh, which I'll talk to you about in a separate time. Uh, do you consult people for, for obviously what you've done? Like, kind of like what I do. A lot of people hire me to just get my breakdown on how I succeeded in different platforms. Do you do that for individuals or maybe a group setting if we were to do a seminar, say, in California next year? Um, I don't do uh, individual consulting. Um, I used to. It's just with everything I got going on, it's just it, the the, the ROI on the time. It's, it's like, what yeah. would I have to charge to, to, to do that? Um, you know, in terms of a seminar, I would be more than happy. I used to have... Um, for eight years, we put on a conference where it was like kind of a business conference for people like in our space, in our network. And um, and it was great. But then the last year was the year that COVID kind of broke out. And that was actually the decision that my partner and I, Antonio, um, decided at the same time, like, you know what, let's let's put, shut this down. We didn't know that COVID was coming, but it's something that I miss. And so I would be open to doing, you know, or coming or speaking or or hanging out and, and you know, being a part of something, but just at this point, nothing's really presented itself or even, or even virtually, you know, nowadays yeah. I just got hired in New York. I don't have to fly to New York next week, thankfully to do a conference for a, a, a computer company, you yeah. know? So yeah. uh, I, I got to talk because uh, we got to get you going here. Your businesses um, that you've legitimately you've created and they're just trending in so many different areas. We have Teague Hanley, 
T Shanley. Yep. Oh, yes. Sick. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. It's it's a weird name, and I hated it at first too. <laughs> T Shanley. Okay. Yep. Uh, we have Pete and Pedro. Yep. We have Enemy. By the way, yes. guys, as I'm saying this, the links are on the profile. We have your salon. Correct me. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. We have area. Yeah, area six two seven. Yep. And and that is. It's an invest. It's it's basically like a four of my or three of my friends. We we invest in small bootstrap businesses and and try and help them get from you know six figures to seven. And so it was just an opportunity to hang out with three guys that I love <laughs> and help help small businesses. Hell yeah, hello, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you also have Salon uh, Posta, yeah, uh, which that is in I believe in Atlanta. Yep, right outside Marietta or in in Marietta, right outside Atlanta. Yes, yeah, Salon Posta. Yep. And finally, we have Menfluential Media. Yes. Right? Yep. Yep. Um, what <laughs> out of all of them? What is your favorite one? And I know this is hard. Yeah. No, it's not hard. Uh, my 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 favorite thing to do is is still YouTube, and that's kind of like Alpha M, the YouTube. You know, that kind of pushes a lot of the other things forward. Um, you know, the trick is when you do have a brand like you know a YouTube channel or a presence on on social media. The trick and the key that everybody needs to figure out as fast as possible is how do you make money not having to stand up and talk and pitch? And so T. Shanley, the skincare company, that's my largest grossing revenue or largest grossing business. We have figured it out so that now it's not just me talking about and pitching, because until you do, you're never really going to be able to grow that business and you're going to be a slave to it, honestly. And then, you know, Pete and Pedro, I hired a marketing director that basically took a lot of the heavy lifting off of my shoulders. And we have grown that to where it's not just me. Um, you know, some of the other businesses also, the ones that are successful are the ones that I don't try to micromanage and that I've kind of gotten off of my shoulders in terms of, of needing to promote it in order to make money. And that is something that each and every one of you listening, if you start a business and you're the face and you're the one that is talking about and pitching it, how do you make money not having to do that? Because what happens if you just don't want to do it or you're never going to ultimately be able to scale or grow it if it is reliant upon you just getting up and talking about it. So, but they're all fun. I mean, they're all fun. I love them all. That's awesome. I still cannot believe, and I say this because I've worked with, interviewed so many different types of people that are not... God, they're not even one fourth of where you're at in the industry. We'll leave it at that. And the fact that you still film your own videos, mind you, you're, you're kind of like me though. Like I have a setup here and in three other rooms, literally yeah. out of my house. So I'm, I'm good. I'm self-sufficient. You're independent like me, but other people, they need to hire seven or eight other people, right? Their overhead is over their ass, right? Yep. So my question is, so you do the YouTube, you do the editing, all your social media is you, no one's helping you post nothing. Uh, I've got one, two guys, one guy helps edits my videos and makes them TikTok videos. I have another guy that helps me on Instagram and does reels and posts there. Um, that's awesome. That's nothing. my focus. Yeah. My focus needs to be, needs to be YouTube, honestly. And so, yeah, no, it's uh, and that's one of the things when I filed bankruptcy back in 2006, That was one of the things. It's like, how do I start a business and keep my overhead as low as possible? Now, that being said, you know, I think I think a lot of people think you need more than you do and want to spend more money than you need to spend. For me, I will grow a little bit slower just so that I make more money. And because I'm not in the business of of just raising a bunch of money and being all crazy and just, you know, spending frivolously, I understand how hard it is to make a dollar. And that's something, unfortunately, that once you get into the space of, you know, YouTube or, or Instagram, and you learn how to make money online, it can kind of warp your perception of how hard it actually is to make a dollar in the real world. Because, you know, this is not reality. Once you figure out and you've got a message, it, you know, it's not like I remember how hard I had to make or work to, to make a thousand dollars. When I was a personal trainer, that was 20 sessions. That was 20 sessions. You give me a thousand dollars, and that's 20 sessions. Like, yeah. and so like it's hard to make money. But then, you know, if you have an audience, it's it's you know, and and you you have you know trust in people that love you and you figure out that mechanism, then it's a lot easier, but it still doesn't take away from the fact that it's hard to make money in the real world. Uh-huh. And I still don't don't associate, you know, the internet as the real world. It's this could end tomorrow. Like people you're are- not in control, you're not in control of anything. I mean. 
you know, YouTube, Facebook, like in a, in a, I mean, even like you look at uh, what was that? Snapchat. Was that the one? Wait, which one? There was uh, not TikTok. Um, no, Vine. 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 Yes. Vine. Like you had all these people, like you know, that were making like a living off of this, and then in one day, literally, boom, it's done, right. and it's like, wait, shit, yeah. what do I do? And look at, um, look at MySpace. Dude, yeah. I had almost a million followers in 2007, you dude. Yeah, I'm not you were kidding. killing it on MySpace. And then, boom, it's done, right? Bye. And so, yeah, these these kids, you know, they just, they they don't realize how hard the real world actually is in terms of making money. And they get it too easy. They get it too quick. And it's way more, I can't imagine. I'm actually glad, super, super happy that, that I didn't have social media growing up. I can't imagine. Like, I know the pressure that people feel now. Like, I can't imagine, like, having it i i should say i know the pressure that i felt back when i didn't have it and now like these kids today like i'm like oh my god how do you deal with this and, and so that's it's how crazy they that's how they live their life though they live their life in comparison oh i have to look like this i have to act like that my photos my boyfriend has to look like this yeah no absolutely it's it's crazy what does aaron marino have coming out or presently that's out and upcoming for the next year that people should be like tooth and nail like jumping out of the freaking seat <laughs> uh i've got a i've got a a ball powder launching in the next few weeks oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really? that's it. oh yeah that's oh, dude, awesome I yeah, I have I have everything. Um, so that's that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about uh my ball powder that I've been working on, and so my my nuts will smell amazing, and so uh yeah, that's that's the big thing. <laughs> so, it's a, it's a low bar. Yeah, you asked. That's what's exciting to me. I've I got ball on, powder coming. I got, out. I got everything. You heard it here first, Aaron. You think I, you think I, you think I'm kidding? Like I've got like like butt wipes. Like I you name it. I I, oh. I I'm coming out with it, and so. Yeah, <laughs> that is mind blown. Amazing. That goes to show one thing goes right. You got to live fearless. And that's what you're doing, Aaron, dude. Like, uh, you know what I like about you, too, is you just don't care. You don't care what people fucking think about you. And I'm going to bleep this out later. But uh, that, that's why you're living the life. And you're always like this. You're like, hold on. Is someone going to take my money? You yeah, what? Oh, are you exactly. on ball powder? Hold on. <laughs> Exactly. Ball powder. Here, here you come. Yeah, exactly. I'm an opportunist. That's what it's about, Jason. What, Let me try your, it. What's your horoscope what? sign, sir? I'm a Taurus. Oh, yeah. You're sweet, but you are that bull, baby. <laughs> what about you? I'm a Pisces. Are you? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, very, very cool. Well, this is awesome, man. I had Dude. a blast. You're a great guy and, and you're doing some incredible things. So it's exciting to to see, you know, good things happen to good people. Well done. Thank you so much. I'm glad we made it work, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a blessed day, brother. Guys, this is Aaron Marino from Alpha M, and you are listening to Get Inspired. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer, and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle, and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.